Hello and Randy, you're playing Farming Simulator 22 and welcome back to the 36x Spring Creek map here since last episode. Finished up the uh, wheat harvest here on field 387. That went uh, really smoothly here, I would say, with the mother band. I wouldn't, didn't have any issues with that. Uh, mother band was, I don't know, maybe like half full or something. Uh, so we didn't like particularly fill this up. Already went ahead and emptied it out and sold the contents here. And of course, once you do that, and then we're ready to move here again. Uh, for those of you not familiar with the concept of a mother bin, again, they're not designed to, uh, like, hold and move at the same time. They're designed to just sit along the edges of the field and essentially be a buffer tank between your grain carts and your trucks. Or, I guess if you're not using grain carts, maybe between your combines and your trucks. But uh, if you have a mother bin, it's probably safe to say you're probably also running a uh, grain cart as well, I would imagine. Anyway, speaking of grain carts and harvesting here... Uh, we are still working on harvesting here on field, what is this, field 385 here? Yeah, the, the field that does not have a mother bin on it is not finished yet. Meanwhile, the, I don't know, I guess 37, really not that much of a bigger field, is it? This field is already done here, and I've moved that combine over to the uh, sorghum field. We're going to be moving on down there here uh, this episode. We're going to leave a uh, course play to this, and at least for myself, everyone, we are going to go harvest some sorghum, so... Um, just, you know, like, drive up there, bud. Unload. Okay, well, you have been working, so we'll just, uh, hope they continue to work, and maybe we'll go check that here in a few moments. Oh, that's, uh, extremely fast holding out pipe there, okay. Hey, <laughs> uh, I was not expecting that. Anyway, field, uh, 390, we got, uh, sorghum planted in this field here. Go and, uh, get this, uh, harvested here this episode, at least as far as we can this episode, anyway. It's obviously got time to wrap it up. Uh, so far, I think we're making some pretty good progress on the harvesting here so far. Uh, again, we're running at two New Holland CR 1090s here. Now, we are only running the 40, was it 41 feet? I think these are 41 foot heads, not 40 foot if I remember correctly. So, a little bit narrower than the 45s, that one. But, horse play did not like to unload with the 45s. Uh, the pipe here on this New Holland just, uh, not uh, not long enough for the 45s here, at least for course play anyway. Mind you, I'm sure if I was using them, I'd probably would make it work. But uh, course play was not happy about it, so downgraded the headers to the 41 foot. Those seem to be working uh, well enough. Haven't had any issues yet that I know of. Unless, of course, we're having an issue over here now. I'm telling you, I want, want to go uh, check that here because I don't think they're unloading. In fact, I should be able to, yeah, New Holland CR-1090 with wheat. He is currently sitting at 95% full, and he's not. Why are you not on loan there, bud? Really? Why we do this? Get up there. Did he stop? No, he's still running. Ah, really? Oh my goodness, as soon as you uh, turn him on, he just goes to uh, close the cover again there. And of course, course play is set to unload on the go. Although fortunately, I think he's close enough to the end, so he just stopped there a minute, that's good. Not sure what uh, course play's problem was there. We'll just unload the combine here a minute, we'll let him uh, continue on. Still have, uh, what, maybe a small half field Actually, you know what? Maybe we got. Do we have more than half a field left to go yet? I thought we had about half a field done. Maybe not. No. Okay, we got actually a large portion of the field left to go yet. Okay. Well, of course, but well, you need to like uh, pick up the uh, pace here a little bit because that's a bit ridiculous. Not exactly sure what course size problem is there, but uh, anyway, back to the harvest I have going on over here. Uh, so far, again, too, by the way, I'm looking at the yield maps here. Looks like we're yielding really good here so far on our fields. Nothing to uh, complain about here this time around. And obviously, the yields are looking much better than they did last time, too. So that's always a good uh, sign, right? We go look at our yield maps here. Yeah, you can see some of our other fields, you know, like 385 there. Yeah, there's some oranges and reds in there. Not a great yield. Uh, again, that's because I didn't take the time first time around to fertilize and lime and all that good stuff. Part of that too was, you know, like, 
expensive to do that too, right? I would, so you know, we'd have to probably borrow another couple million dollars to just uh, like fertilize and lime our fields the initial pass there versus just, well, we'll harvest it, we'll sell the crops, then we'll have enough money to lime the fertilizer. To be honest, probably would be better to borrow the money, but uh, yeah, you know, it's not how we did it, so. Looks like we never harvested field 390 yet. I know a couple of the fields, Evan, were empty when we first uh, started on this uh, series here. And apparently 390 and then also 384. Looks like those are both empty as well last uh, season, so whatever was on it was already harvested or we didn't harvest it. Actually, there should have been more fields than that that weren't hard. Oh, you know what? Three. Oh, was it 387, 388? Might not have had crops. Or if they did have crops on them, uh, we used other methods for harvesting, if you folks recall. You know, I think there was a couple of what, sugar beet, potato fields, something like that. Yeah, we used some other harvesters on those. You know, apparently, for some reason, they didn't uh, record the yield for some reason. I don't know why. Nah, I'm not looking at that. You know, I'm get them uh, sensors calibrated or something. Maybe the uh, the true set wasn't uh, quite reading the uh, yield data properly or something. For those who don't know what uh, true set is, uh, by the way, I believe that is uh, John Deere's depth control for their cultivators, I think. So, yeah. Oh, yes, we've got a nice uh, fence along the edge of this uh, field here. Uh, reminder again, there does not seem to be any boundary along the edge of this map. So, you know, for those of you who want to just, uh, you know, jump off, you know, you can. And I guess that, you can drive off as well, which uh, that would probably be worse yet. So. Not sure again, Evan, why there's no map boundary. I do find that to be kind of annoying myself, everyone, but, well, it is what it is. Not much I can do about it. Except, you know, put a fence like we did around it. That does seem to work. Yeah, again, I don't know if that's just uh, because of the size of the map, Evan. The map author couldn't get a field boundary. Or, say field boundary. A map boundary to work? Or just, uh, yeah, I don't know. Just didn't put one? I know it wouldn't be the first time we've seen a map without a boundary, Evan. Just, uh, it is kind of annoying when you have that, because, uh, you never know what hired workers uh, might do. I mean, of course, myself, I would, I would never, uh, never drive off the edge of the map. But <laughs> no, I would never do that. I'm sure you folks watching one either do who would do something that silly, right? Got our uh, New Holland T8435 down here, by the way. Running the uh, Elmer's Hallmaster. This is what, yeah, 2,000 bushel grain cart here, by the way. Uh, we got the identical grain cart over on the other field there as well. That is being hauled by the T9, though. The T9, that's a 645 uh, smart track. And yeah, unfortunately, but course play doesn't like to unload anything but course play. So, yes, Evan, I could probably set this up with auto drive. But as you folks have seen in the past, like, let's let's face it, Evan, I think I can probably unload myself quicker doing it myself than I can waiting for auto drive. So, I mean, yeah, it is cool having auto drive with the automation there. Like, ooh, I can just sit here and wait. Auto drive will come unload me. Emphasis on the sit and wait. And then, of course, I mean, like you actually have to, with auto-drive, too, you have to, like, literally sit and wait, too. I mean, like, as soon as you get out of that combine, I mean, auto-drive will no longer unload you. Kind of annoying. So, like, you literally have to sit in the combine and wait. And again, auto-drive, at least in my experience, I mean, I know you folks keep saying uh, you've got to unload on the go. I think I've only ever had one, maybe two times for auto-drive as unloaded on the go. 
Always tip the auto drive always unloads while stopped. Nothing necessarily wrong with that if auto drive would be a little bit more prompt about, uh, you know, hey, I'm ready to unload. Start unloading. Nope, nope. You gotta, I'm ready to unload. You gotta wait. And of course, auto drive always does that like start stop thing too when it's uh, going to unload across the field there. I think it's like Pathfinder or something like that. I've had a guess. Oh, and I just forgot another uh, really annoying thing happened too. Don't forget too, uh, auto drive. Always oh, found this really annoying. Auto drive will line up with the combine and then just drive on by. It's like, what? You're lined up. I started to unload. You just kept on driving. I don't know why auto drive does that, but. Just a reminder too, by the way, if you'd like to uh, join us in on the RDL and multiplayer servers, you can again find that information down below in the uh, description there. Again, anyone is welcome to join as long as you can play nicely, follow the rules. Uh, we ask that you please join us in on the RDL and the TeamSpeak server. Uh, again, if you'd like to join us on the multiplayer server, please join us in on the RDL and the TeamSpeak server. Information is down below in the uh, description there. Welcome to join as long as you can play nicely and follow the rules. Let's see how we look in here. Curious on the uh, yield here as well. Definitely looking good, Evan. Oh, there might not be any 125% uh, of this field, though, from the looks of it. Looks like we're looking at all. That's right around, I think, 100. Yep, around 100% there. Oh, well. Still a little bit uh, disappointing how the uh, yield works, in my opinion, everyone. A again, if you're not familiar with how precision farming works here, and I know I've mentioned this uh, before, but... Still disappointing that really your single biggest contributor to yield that one is the soil type. Like, unless you're doing something like seriously wrong, Evan, there's no reason why you should really get like the lime or the fertilizer or anything like that wrong. Yeah, you might, uh, like I did, I missed the weeds here on, uh, was it three, 383? And I thought there was one other field too, but uh, you, you might do something like that. I mean, I'm curious to see too if like the, uh, yield will actually uh, reflect those numbers or not here. I guess we'll find out, but you know, again, when it comes right down to it, like your only really a variable when it comes to yield is your soil type. And then now don't get me wrong. I mean, a uh, soil type definitely does play uh, a role in real life as well, but like I don't know if it's quite that much. I'd say weather probably actually maybe uh, I don't know if it plays the biggest contributor, but that definitely can play uh, a role in that, right? And then of course, not to mention real life too, you got all the different fertilizers and yeah, you know, just all that different stuff that goes into it, right? We are full again. Let's go grab the grain cart. Oh, almost made it around of it. Not quite. Not quite. Let's see our other combine is full here again as well. Makes me think I should probably go check on that over there, everyone. Uh, why is that uh, combine not being unloaded? What's the verdict? Uh, grain cart is there. Hmm. Are we having issues? wonder if there's something with maybe the height of that pipe and the track or something. They think they're in a collision with each other. I've seen that uh, problem before. Uh, 
been a while since I've seen that problem, but I think that was mostly an auto drive problem too. I went auto drive would like drive up to the pipe like, oh, I'm in collision with it. And then it's just like, nope, not going any further. I think that might be what force plays that doing over here. Let's see what's going on here a minute. No, oh, you're not even like Um Hello Course play. Did I forget to turn you back on? No, you're on. Why are you not, like, unloading there, bud? Do we have to uh, turn some settings on here or something? Well, let's see. Avoid driving on fruit. That is deactivated. So he can drive wherever he wants. Fuel save. That's fine. Yeah, open the mouse. So we can deactivate that. No one ever wants that setting on. Hmm. Well, no idea. Like, you got a combine down low there, but you're uh, double checker. You're set to the right field, right? Presume he's set to the right field. Yeah, he's set to the right field. Okay. And, like, unload. Hmm. Really? Okay. Why would we be so derpy here, huh? Promise if I go download him, he's gonna. Uh, just uh, sit there. Hmm. Oh, now he's moving. Driving through the crop, moving, but... Oh, well. I mean, we did turn that setting off, so he's allowed to. Okay. Going back to my field level. We'll see once, uh... See once in another minute here. Maybe if he'll unload or not. Want. If not, maybe we'll have to look into uh, buying like another uh, T8 here tractor. Uh, this T8 uh, 435 seems to work decently enough. You know, given the size of the grain cart we have open, I probably would prefer a T9, at least in real life anyway, but oh well. Just a couple stocks of torque out there. Nothing to see there, one. Anyway, to the uh, comment section here in a moment. I'm going to see what you folks had to say here for last episode. And as a reminder, always enjoy reading all your focus comments. So if you have something to say, throw it down below. Throw some at course by two for now. Oh, actually, what course they must be unloaded. There we go. We finally got for a white just sitting there. That one. I guess one good thing about having the glance mod on that one. Which, at least for the last uh, couple series, I've been kind of turning that off at one. I, I keep saying this, though, but at some point you just get so much stuff on the screen, it just it, it feels so cluttered. Just too much going on. Just, uh, okay, turn some of this stuff off, right? All these various HUDs and screens and like, oh my goodness. as I've seen on a field a while here on this map. Okay, zero degrees. Auto with that. The lines are on. Indeed, they are. Yeah, mine. Lock it on. Away we go. Now we're talking about it. Okay, next, uh, here we have uh, Petro was saying a good video. Uh, Randy, are any farmers near you growing sugar beets? Uh, Michigan is a big producer of sugar beets. And have you seen any of the operations? What crop do the farmers rotate after sugar beets? Well, a bunch of those questions I am not going to be able to answer because I am not definitely with sugar beets. And at least in my part of the state, uh, I am not aware of like any sugar beets that are grown per se. There, there might be like a small field somewhere, somewhere, but yeah, no. I don't know of any uh, sugar beets growing around here. So I think that's more of the opposite side of the state here as far as I know of one. Uh, so I'm on the, the west side of the state. I believe the east side of the state, at least from what I've heard, uh, is where they grow a lot of sugar beets. So yes, I have not, or I have said, no, I have not seen the operations. And I don't know what uh, crops they would rotate in after sugar beets.
Yeah, don't like that alignment. Come on there. Yes, we can do better. That's better. Uh, Christopher was saying, good video. Keep it up. Hey, thank you very much for that. Uh, Mason was saying, sugar cane. That one road, just in case, harvester thingy is going to have to bite the dust. Because I'm modding a uh, John Deere X9 combine and a 16 row corn head to harvest the sugar cane with. And don't say that's not realistic. It can be done with enough work. And he was saying, I've had a ton of course play generation problems since the game update. Nothing is hardly working anymore. Wow. It seems like the last uh, update from Giants has broken a lot of things. Or something. I've heard a lot of people complaining about uh, this or that that's not working. And as far as the uh, John Deere X9 uh, combine and 16 row header harvesting uh, Shurricane, uh, I'm gonna call fake news on that one and say it's uh, not realistic. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna say it's very not realistic. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna go one step further and say it's impossible. And extremely unrealistic. Here. Well, I think I might have actually read this comment. So actually, you know what? I might have read all the comments here. It seems like I'm missing because I replied to a whole bunch of comments here over the weekend. I went, like I said, it seems like I'm missing something. Maybe not. Oh, we're almost full here again. Okay, grain cart. Oh, we're looking on the grain cart here. 41%. So we got enough space to unload at least twice more, maybe three times, probably not quite the third, but real close anyway. I think I'll probably have to look at uh, getting a truck, or maybe we'll just get the uh, mother bin over here. This was the only field over here, so I figured I'd probably just leave the uh, mother bin over there, and uh, we'll wait for the next uh, big harvest that are coming up. Corn, soybeans, and I think, was it sunflowers? I believe that's what we have left to harvest here yet. Fields 383, 384, and 386. Also, how are we looking over here? Looks like we're uh, behaving ourselves and finally uh, getting the job done. That's good. Yeah, of course, on the track. Not really the vehicle. I need, I need the combine. Looks like we need to get the leak in the bottom of that grain cart fixed here. Just pouring right back out. Hate it when that happens. I'll have to say, when so far, uh, even uh, given the size of this uh, map and the fields here, I think we're making some pretty good progress on the harvest here this time around. So we're down to just the uh, three bigger fields left here. And of course, I mean, yeah, that these fields are just a little bit bigger than the rest. <clears throat> 383. Um, yeah, a little bit bigger there, but here's to see how long it takes to harvest that field here this time around. Fortunately, at least when it comes to uh, field work, Evan, won't have to worry about, at least hopefully won't have to worry about lime or anything like that. We should be good, I think, on all the fields, right? Everything should be about the same here at this point, other than obviously the harvested ones will be a little bit, uh, 383, huh? Did I not put lime on that field? According to this map, it doesn't look like I did. Well, I'll have to uh, check that here after this next harvest. I hate to think how much it's going to cost to align that field. It cost us, what, like a half a million dollars or something? Oh, I guess it wasn't quite a half a million. It was like 300000 to uh, spray herbicide on that field. That was absolutely outrageous. I'm like, oh, my goodness. 
should have probably went with a sea and spray spray oven. Probably could have saved ourselves, you know, 75% of that cost. Almost would have probably paid off the spare just uh, doing that field at that point. Especially, uh, how much is the tow behind one, everyone? Like, if we went tow behind... Oh, uh, actually, where is the John Deere sea and spray? Uh, I thought, oh, there it is. Okay, so I thought there was a tow behind one. That is 52000 Wow. Could have bought uh, three of these, Evan, and probably still paid off. And given the fact that the New Holland sprayer is, what, probably a couple hundred thousand. How much is the self-propelled New Holland here? 259 Yeah, I, I could have bought an awful lot of, uh, lot of those sprayers at that point, Evan. Of course, I guess the one downside is it's a tow behind. And you have to have another tractor to pull it with. And those tend to be um, not quite as uh, course play friendly. Well, let's see if GPS uh, corrects it itself. There we go. Let's see, a little bit of a wild swing going there. Now, what's up with all the, uh, anyone else have this? What's up with all the uh, New Holland equipment blinking flashing screens? Combine has it, uh, what, the, I've got another tractor that has it too, don't I? I think so. Anyone else experiencing that or is that just me? I'm mean, like, and I don't know you folks, that, that drives me kind of nuts. Like, uh, I'm sorry, nope. I can only look at that so much where it's like, yeah, no, that, that gets annoying, really annoying. Like, oh boy, if I was trying to harvest on this corner and having to look at that, no thank you. So yeah, curious. Uh, anyone else out there, you folks having problems with your screens on your new Holland equipment? I guess maybe I should play in the cab with some more equipment. Maybe, no, maybe it's uh, more than just the uh, new Holland equipment that's doing it, but sure seems like it's just new Holland equipment. I can't say I've seen other equipment do it so much. Oh, it looks like we got our engine load information up here. That's kind of cool. Got our RPMs. None of the other information up here, though, like rotor speed and concaves, you know, all that good stuff. I mean, that, yeah. Unfortunately, none of that stuff's there. But we do have our engine load. Looks like we're hovering right around 60 to 70% uh, there most of the time. I see uh, dipping down in the 50s occasionally. Interesting that we seem to uh, use more engine load turning it around than we do actually harvesting. Hmm, suspicious. Oh, we're down, down to 50% now. Wow, 40%. Apparently going uh, uphill, at least I think. Uh, sure felt like it was uphill. I could be wrong. Maybe we are going downhill now. Yeah, we're like 10% lower going this way. Weird. How do you explain that one, Evan? Engine load is like 10% lower going this way. Okay, now I'm really curious. Oh, it's almost time to wrap it up. Hopefully we can uh, turn around again, Evan, and see what's like if it goes back up to 60%. Now, like, are, are we taking... No, oh, we're full. Uh, grain cart. Yeah, right there. Don't bother driving the grain cart. We'll just drive the combine over there. See how it's right there. Engine load 30%. We'll back up. Load while loading 26 27. Okay, cool. Can we see the pipe. Oh, we can see the pipe on load here. One, I forget what uh, was that the K7150? I forget the model numbers on that one. I'm in the last uh, series there where you couldn't actually see the pipe while unloading from the cab. It's like, well, that's kind of annoying. find you in real life, I mean, you can kind of like lean over, right? Not something you can really do in the game so much. Your head position is kind of like stuck. Like, this is where your head position is. Yeah, like you can look around, but nothing else. 
Okay, back to harvest. Yeah, we're still sitting right around those 40s and 50s, everyone. We'll have to turn around here. And then we'll have to wrap it up this episode as well. But once we turn around, I'm, I'm curious to see once if it'll jump back up to like 60. Yeah, yeah, I do see it spike into 60 every so often. But we're like definitely like 50. Sometimes drops down in the 40s. Sometimes goes, yeah, there was a 60. Sometimes jumps up to 60. But, well, there's 45. Wow. 50, 60. Apparently our upper sieve and lower sieve is uh, set at 17 and 6 mils, respectively. Oh, okay, let's see if that jumps up now when we're going this way, I won. No, not really. Okay. Well, I think on that note, and then with that, we're going to wrap it up here this episode. Oh, is it going to jump up? Yeah, it definitely has jumped up, hasn't it? But we're like in the solid 60s now, like, and it's jumping up to 70. Okay, drops down to low of 50. 70, 60, 70. Huh. Are we going uphill this direction then or something? I'm very curious, I mean, as to why... Why it seems like, okay, that definitely looks like a little bit of a hill there, but now it looks like we're pretty level. Okay, well, anyway, Evan, not sure what's up with that. Seems a little weird to me, but anyway, we're going to wrap it up. Thanks for watching, Evan. If you folks have any comments or questions, be sure to leave them down below. And as always, Evan, thanks for watching. Until next time.